I'm Joan Cartan Hansen. Thank you for joining this Dialogue Web Extra. We're talking with photojournalist Paula Jean Perko. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. I want to ask you about your work. In, I mean, we, we've been, in our regular program, we talked about all your work from your book, uh, Women Who Light the Dark. But I want to ask you a little bit about your previous life, <laughs> advertising. How did you get started? You, you eventually had your own agency. How did you start in advertising? Um, I had a neighbor. And I lived in a neighborhood where a lot of medical doctors lived. There was one neighbor who was working on the very first marketing research. And I remember sitting in pigtails on his fence. And when I ask him the same question I ask everyone, what makes you happy about what you're doing? Why is it interesting? He told me something different from what everybody else said. Um, and so I was very interested in this difference. What, was, what did he and, say? And he said, it's possible to understand more about why, how people live and why they live the way they do. That's advertising. And yeah. I thought, that's fascinating. <laughs> I, would love, I mean, I'm a little girl. That's exactly what children want to know. So when it became time to study, I said, I'm going to be in advertising. And I did it for 35 years. And did you find that it was someplace that you could learn about how people live and why they live you that bet. way? <laughs> I learned an enormous amount. What did you learn? Um, I learned some things that I used when I was working on the books later that I would never have imagined that were, would be useful. And I learned some things that weren't useful because I spent so much time in marketing research, as I mentioned. <laughs> I, I imagined that I would go and talk with women sitting on the floor of their huts and ask them 109 questions, literally 109. And I thought I would ask everyone exactly the same question, and then I would be able to do comparisons from country to country. It took six hours to do those first <laughs> interviews, and I thought, <laughs> this isn't working. <laughs> well, and this, is there something about advertising that still attracts you as a, as a profession? Or is it, has it changed since you started? In it's business? changed drastically since I stopped being in advertising, yeah. which is now almost 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, people in that business are doing completely different, yeah. using completely different media. Um, and so th what I... My hunch is that it's very, very different from what I did. And uh, as long as I have a chair, let me ask you about your other books. Tell, tell us about how Celebrating Women came about. Celebrating Women came about as I was finishing In Her Hands, which was yeah. the title of the first book. I was packing up my camera equipment way up northwest India, near the Pakistan border. And as I was packing up, a woman came up to me and said, come back in the fall and we will teach you how to do the dances <laughs> that we dance all night to honor the mother god. And I said, you do? <laughs> I'm coming back. Um, and indeed, I thought, that's fascinating. I wonder if there are other festivals that celebrate the feminine spirit or women's lives that people just don't know about. And when I came back to the United States and began doing, re began doing research, I discovered that indeed there are festivals, I immediately found 155 of them, <laughs> festivals that celebrate women's accomplishments and roles and rites of passage and spiritual lives all over the world. But there had never b been a book, as far as I could tell, that looked cross-culturally at festivals. And as far as I could tell, there had never been a museum exhibit, so I busily got to work on doing both. And th how about the In Her Hands, first book? First book, mm -hmm. In Her Hands, um, was inspired by news from the Beijing conference, the UN conference mm -hmm. on women, um, in which I learned that women were earning money to send their children, children to, school, to school, even though they themselves were living below the UN income poverty line. In doing these books, what is it about writing that appeals to you? That writing and, and different, separate from the photography? Writing. Yeah. I'm not sure that writing appeals to me. It is so <laughs> difficult. It is really a thousand times more difficult than I ever knew to imagine. I'm married to a man who is a writer. Um, and I have such respect for people who write well. I had imagined that I would be able to do without writing completely. Um, I thought I could just write photo captions for the photographs. <laughs> But the stories were so rich, I discovered that I was going to have to learn how to write more than business reports, which was what my experience had <laughs> led me to believe I could do. Um, so I joined a writer's group. And 
among the many things that were required, I had a straight up lear learning curve. Um, learning how to write was one. We had the option. You know, I actually had a book in progress. That helps. That's true. <laughs> I had wonderful material. <laughs> we have one more picture from the book that we didn't get a chance to talk about in the program. This is from, I think it's from Nicaragua. Let's take a look at this, this one last picture. And you can tell us the story about it. This picture, this is, it's a, it's a fascinating, well, it's welding. They're it's, doing welding. She is welding, that's right. And, and this is part of a project um, that is called Mujeres Constructoras. Um, it teaches women who would otherwise have to work in agriculture or maybe, best case, cleaning houses, um, to do welding, electrical work, carpentry. All of those are completely antithetical to the gender stereotypes of what women's work should be in Nicaragua and indeed many places. Um, but those are all jobs that where women can earn more money than they otherwise would be able to do. Um, and there is more job opportunity in those areas than they would otherwise have access to. Are women, the stereotype of what a woman is, is that changing as you have from culture to culture? And is it how I, more, I guess just ask, well, how is it changing as you've gone from culture to culture and location to location? Probably the best way to see that is with celebrating women mm -hmm. because what fascinated me about the festivals was that they celebrate women for completely different reasons, completely different <laughs> reasons, from the most wire-like behaviors to the most nourishing and kind behaviors and everything in between. It is such testimony to the fact that gender assignments for women and for men, by the way, mm -hmm are really arbitrary and societally assigned. In fact, I think if we could blow away all of those assumptions about what men are supposed to do and what women are supposed to do that limit us from being the full range of what we each can be, um, it would be really a wonderful step forward. It would change everything. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking time for joining us for this Web Extra. If you'd like to learn more about the books that we've discussed, go to the dialogue check here on our dialogue website at hoptv.org. We have links and more information. And thanks for tuning in for this Dialogue Web Extra.